Whether you're a woodworker or arts and crafts maker, professional or hobbyist, a laser engraver can take your projects to the next level and elevate your designs and creativity. I'm a complete beginner when it comes to laser engraving, but today I'm diving in deep. I just got the Laser Packer 4 dual laser engraver with both a 10 watt diode laser and a 2 watt infrared one, and today I'm going to unbox it, set it up and test it with a bunch of different designs and materials. Some will be familiar to most, but others might surprise you and hopefully give you some new ideas. Let's see how this machine handles materials like clear glass and acrylic, wood, craft paper, aluminium, steel, stone and even terracotta clay. This video is from a true beginner's perspective, so if you're curious about getting into laser engraving, this is a good place to start. You'll get to learn a lot from my mistakes for sure. If you're more experienced, you still might pick up a few new tricks or inspiration from the materials and designs I try out. Let's take a look at what's in the box. Laser Packer sent me this full bundle for testing, including the rotary extension and the slide extension. There's no sponsorship involved and no pre-approved script, just my genuine thoughts as I explore the machine for the first time. I do have a discount code if you're interested in picking one up, and if you use the link in the description I earn a small commission with no extra cost to you. That kind of support really helps the channel grow, so thank you if you choose to do that. Right on top there are a few packs of sample materials. Always nice to have, but honestly, I ended up doing most of the testing on random stuff I had lying around the house. Next are the manuals, one for the main unit and one for each of the extensions. Then we get to the base of the machine. The work surface is a sturdy plate with threaded holes for mounting fixtures and accessories. Super practical. There's a ruler and some more test materials and then we get to the first tray. This one holds the slide extension, with its sliding rail and two part platform that mounts on top. Everything is packed in custom cut foam, so nothing can move or get damaged during shipping. The next tray has the rotary extension, the laser head itself and the vertical stand that connects it to the base. This part also has a vertical slider that lets you adjust the laser's height. All the parts feel solid and well built and I think the minimalist design really looks sharp. In the bottom tray you'll find the tailstock and the base for the rotary extension along with the protective visor for the laser. There is also a riser column for the laser head which you'll need when using the slide or rotary extensions. Then there's little boxes with all the cables you need, neatly labeled, and a plastic container with screws and basic tools for setup. Last but not least, a pair of laser safety glasses. They feel high quality and give good coverage, which is great. Safety gear is important when working with lasers. All in all, it's a complete and well-organized kit. Everything is thoughtfully packed and seems to be of high quality. I can't wait to put it together and start testing. The manual is easy to follow, with step-by-step -step instructions, clear illustrations and references to both the parts and the screws you'll need. The assembly is straightforward, and as someone who doesn't consider themselves especially technical, I really appreciate that. I like things that just work out of the box, without complicated setups or configurations, and looks like this machine checks that box. I start by attaching the vertical slider stand to the base using four screws. Once that's done, it's really a matter of mounting the laser module on top. The platform the laser sits on is well thought out. It uses a single solid screw to secure the laser module, which makes installation quick and easy. There's also a large screw that locks the platform to the vertical stand. Loosen that and you can actually tilt the laser head, giving you the option to engrave off to the side or even upwards depending on your project. The protective visor attaches magnetically, so it's easy to take on and off when needed. It snaps right into place and adds a nice finishing touch. Now let's look at the connections. On the back of the laser module there's a power socket, a USB-C port for connecting your computer and two USB-2 ports. These are used to power and control the accessories like the fan on the visor, the vertical slider or any of the other extensions. Both the rotary and slide extensions have their own dual USB ports as well so you can daisy chain multiple accessories together. It's a smart system and keeps things modular and tidy. After a bit of simple cable management the whole thing is connected and that's the full assembly done. I'll show you how the extensions go together later in the video, but before we move on to the testing, can we take a second to appreciate how good this thing looks. I'm a big fan of the clean minimalist design. The finish is really unique, somewhere between matte grey, slate blue and maybe even a hint of purple. Hard to describe, but it works. Laser Packer definitely nailed the aesthetics here. Now let's start the testing. For the purpose of showing everything clearly, I've removed the protective cover from the machine. Don't worry. 
I'm still taking safety precautions. It's worth emphasizing that laser engravers can cause serious eye damage, so always use proper protection. And depending on the materials you're working with, toxic fumes can be produced during engraving or cutting. I work in a well-ventilated room, but I still leave the room when the machine is running. Better safe than sorry. Once I find a permanent place for the laser in my shop, I'll set up an exhaust system to vent fumes outside so we can keep working without exposure. With the machine powered up, the top display lights up. You can see which laser is active, the diode or the infrared, and browse previous jobs or put the machine to sleep when you're done. A blinking blue strip on the front indicates no Bluetooth connection yet, which leads us into the app. I downloaded the Laser Pecker the Science Space app from the App Store. Tap the plus symbol in the top right corner, select your model and the machine will appear. Tap it once and a confirmation beep lets you know that you're connected. The app is really intuitive and I actually did everything in this video using it. I never even connected my computer. For the first test, I'll engrave Nordic Turning on a piece of MDF. The app lets you generate text, play around with fonts and styles and more. I won't go too deep into the app in this video, but it's surprisingly powerful and worth exploring. Once the design is ready, I enter preview mode to activate the machine's guide system. You can set the laser height either with the included ruler or more easily with the two red guide dots. When the dots overlap perfectly on the surface, you know the laser is at the correct height. That assumes the guide dots are calibrated correctly out of the box. Mine weren't, but it's easy to fix. Just use the ruler to set the lens 15cm above the surface, then adjust the two screws next to the lens until the dots align. After that, you can rely on the guide dots for all future setups. Next, I choose the laser type, power and depth. For beginners, this can be tricky since settings vary a lot depending on the material and preferred finish. Fortunately, LaserPacker has a detailed settings guide on their website. It takes a lot of experimenting to get perfect results, but the guide gives you a reliable starting point at least. I entered the suggested settings for MDF, press next, and the machine receives the file and starts working on it. This is not going the way I planned. It is actually a disaster and not what I expected at all. The machine almost burned through the material and filled the room with smoke. After looking over my settings again, I found the mistake. Turns out Laser Packer's guide include two sets of settings, one for older firmware, one for the newer version. I used the wrong one. Let's adjust and try again. Much better. This time I got a crisp engraving with no burn marks. The settings guide is definitely a good starting point, as long as you use the settings for your machine. For one more MDF test, I'll use my own logo. I import a JPEG into the app, crop it and use the magic eraser to remove the background. I'm dialing back the power a bit for a lighter engraving. Let's see how it looks. It looks crisp and clean, maybe a bit too soft this time, but not bad. I used a diode laser for MDF, but let's switch to the infrared laser. It's better suited for metals, plastics and glass. The machine comes with some aluminium business cards, a perfect way to test engraving for small businesses or personal branding. With your own laser, you have complete control over the creative process and with the speed of this machine, you can mass produce these sort of things in no time at all. I start with my logo and use the recommended settings from the Laser Packer settings guide for aluminium. Not bad. Now let's try a full card design. It still looks good. I might bump up the resolution even more later, but this shows great potential. Out of curiosity, let's try to engrave steel too. Many people mark their tools to prevent them from being lost or stolen, so let's give that a try on this rusty hammer. I run a few passes to clean the rust by engraving a blank square, then I add two more passes with the text. It works just fine. I'll definitely be labeling more tools and experimenting with the settings. Next, let's try something quite different, engraving a decorative stone.
I'm maxing out the infrared laser for this. Looks really nice, and the machine does a good job engraving on stone. Here's another idea. Using Norse runes, like those found on ancient stones in my country. 10 points if you can decode the message in the comments. Now on to clear glass, which can be tricky. I'll use the rotary extension for this next test. Assembly is simple. Attach the drive unit to the base with four screws. Slide in the tailstock live center and add the jaws to the chuck. The set includes several jaw types. I picked the one that best fit this project. I also mounted the riser for the laser head. Mounting the glass is easy thanks to the smooth chucking mechanism. There's a tool included for tightening. Since the glass isn't perfectly cylindrical, I level it by adjusting the drive unit and tailstock angle. Then I measure the circumference of the glass. I'll have to input that measurement in the app when preparing the design. Once connected via USB, I enable the rotary extension in the app and drop in a test design. Now here's the issue. The laser won't engrave clear glass, because there's no visible surface to absorb the beam. I'm not a physicist, so don't expect me to explain why, but it just doesn't work. One simple workaround for this problem is to use a whiteboard marker to color the engraving area. It creates a surface that the laser can interact with. Let's test it. Preview mode lets me adjust the size and position, and the machine updates the guides accordingly. Very useful. It works. But something looks off. The letters are too close together. Let me try another design to see if it works better. It engraves just fine, but something is still off. I checked the settings in the app and found my mistake. I entered the circumference value in the radius box. Let's correct the settings and try again. This time the proportions looked perfect. The laser leaves a strong, clear mark on the glass. I'm impressed. Before switching and testing the slide extension, I want to try one more rotary test. A terracotta flower pot. I've never seen this done before, so I'm excited to try it. The pot doesn't quite fit the jaws, but pressing it against the plastic jaws with the tailstock works just fine. I align the design, set the laser height and let it run. Great result. Clear engraving with warm tone that matches the terracotta. It's herb planting season, and looks like all our spices and herbs will have their own designated clearly labeled pots. Now let's try the slide extension. Assembly is easy. Just screw the two sides of the platform onto the slider. It connects just like the rotary unit. Without the slide extender, your work area is 16 by 12 centimeters, and that is because of the extreme compact size of this machine. It's designed that way. But with the slide extension, you get 16 by 30 centimeters work area. That opens up the possibilities a bit more and gives some more applications for the unit. To get a feel for the motion and settings, I'll test on some craft paper first. Looks great. Let's test another color of paper, this time with a Star Wars design I bought on Etsy. You can find amazing designs online for just a few dollars. In preview mode, you see the design width and the starting line. Very intuitive. I select the diode laser and the paper settings from the guide. It engraves beautifully on colored paper. Now for the big one, a 16 by 30 centimeter clear acrylic sheet. Engraving on clear acrylic has the same issue as glass and doesn't work without some sort of hack. This time I'll try a different workaround. Instead of using a marker, I place dark craft paper underneath the acrylic. 
Some say you should focus the laser on the paper, others say focus on the acrylic surface. I found the latter works best. Share your tips in the comments if you have a better method. It engraves pretty deeply, in fact. I might reduce depth next time for faster runs. The color seems slightly burned, but I'll wait to judge until it's done. I want the engraved side facing up, but you can have the engraving on the underside of the piece too, which gives a cool depth effect. Just remember to mirror the design in the app. Watching this laser work is incredibly satisfying. And there it is. Clean result, with no visible burn marks. I could color it in to make it even more distinct, but I actually like this look. That wraps up this video, but definitely not my laser journey. I hope you learned something from my mistakes and found some inspiration for your own projects too. Oh, and here's the discount code on the screen. It's valid for two months after this video goes live, so don't wait too long if you want to grab your own. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.